expect. Display's off, everything's off. As soon as you get in the car, your display comes up, but your cluster does not illuminate. Not yet. Once you touch the brake, and it boots up. And now we're going to do a full ride along to show everybody the relationship of the size of the speedometer and everything else. So we'll put it in drive. And you can see everything's matching. See the speed on the right and the speed on the cluster. Six miles an hour. So it's getting the data right off the main computer. So um, everything's fine there to be expected. It's just kind of nice if you are like a lot of drivers and you just like the sense of driving and seeing it right over your eyesight. So without interfering with our driver here. Um, you can see your turn signal indicators right and left. And you've got your speed right where you're looking. That's it. Pretty easy, simple to install. We give you the same lifetime warranty unlike a lot of our competitors. And uh, it's just nice to have all the gauges up front. So now we'll do another turn signal here. So you can tell which way your turn signal's on. You don't have to look all the way over here. You know, it's just right in front, right in the middle of your steering wheel. Thanks again for watching. It's RPM Tesla, and these are in stock. And now we're gonna proceed with the overview and show everybody how to install this, how to test it, just to see how the instrument cluster really works and how it's really invisible and with the air conditioning split view it doesn't interfere with the airflow so if you see the airflow here we positioned it right in the middle right in the middle thanks again for watching hey it's mark rpm tesla model 3 and model y owners you're going to love this instrument cluster display for the model 3 we've been searching for years to brighten up, to give customers information with some kind of display directly through the steering wheel. We think we have the best one, the, less, the least evasive for airflow, and let's show you why. So again, most Model 3 and Model Y owners, when they first got in their cars in 2017 and 18, were amazed that there was no cluster directly in front, like the Model S, the Model X. Well, this is gonna give you a nice feature. It's very subtle. It's easy to install. It takes about 10 minutes to put in. And this is the actual unit here. The unit is a small cluster head with a protective layer on it. And this is going to sit in the dashboard right directly in the center like this. So it's gonna go in just like this, right there, lined up with your, dash, with your dashboard. We're gonna turn it on, connect it. We're gonna show you how it works. And then we're gonna show you how to hide the wire, but you're gonna have all your gauges, like the pictures you've already seen, right there, right in your plain view. So you're gonna have your display on the right. You're gonna have your airflow. So most people know how to split the airflow. Most people don't leave it like this. So if you split the airflow, it's splitting the airflow right here, right around the display. And that's why we like it the best. You can put it anywhere you want, dead center right over the T. Once you put it there, it stays there. It stays mounted there. And then we're going to show you how to wire it up. And we're going to go to the overview on that next. Okay, so first of all, what's in the box? And in the box uh, is the display and the connector wire. Now this wire, we're going to run down the side of the door, under the seat, and we're going to plug it in to where the OBD2 port connection is, which was right underneath this armrest in the back seat. So we're gonna show you how to wire it. We even give you the pry tool, which, show, which helps you open the panels up. But this is the connection. Again, it's all plug and play. There's no wire splicing. There's nothing that's gonna compromise any warranties at all. You can unplug it, plug it back in anytime you want, and it's just simply borrowing the data from the main computer. Okay, let's get started with the overview connection. We recommend you hook it up this way first before taking anything apart, just to make sure you like it. Okay, Okay, now just unravel the cord. And again, we're doing the demonstration mode. So we're gonna power it up. We're not gonna fully install it. We're gonna put it right where it goes. And we're gonna put it in the car and we're gonna connect it. So in this case, we're not gonna run the wire. 
anywhere except we're going to lay it right across the center console. So even if you have one of our beautiful yoke steering wheels, carbon fiber steering wheels, you'll love the visibility of this instrument cluster display. Okay, now we're going to plug this into here. You get in the back seat, just move both your seats up, and it plugs in very, very easy. Okay, now lay down in your back seat, on the bench seat. And again, this is the wire from the cluster display. And uh, now we're going to get the data from the Tesla computer. So it's really easy. You're just going to use the little pry tool, put it right in the side of the armrest cover down here. You can do it from the top or the bottom. We've tried it in a few places, and neither one seemed to matter. You just want to pull down, and it comes right off. So let's take a look at this. You've got one, two, three, four, five clips. So it just slides straight in and punches in and out. Uh, some formats get in the way. So if your format's bothering you, just bend it back. And here you can see the commonly known as the OBD2 port. So all we're gonna do now is unravel this wire and we're going to plug into it or, or make a three-way splice off of it. So you have to push on this tab right there, this little blue tab, and slide it to the left. And this comes right out. And now this is the male and this is the female. So watch how easy this is. Just plug this directly in. It only goes in one way. So if it doesn't go in this way, it goes this way. And it locks in. And it clicks in there. And then this side is going to click in here. So you're just going to put the extra cord underneath or the extra slack, just like this, and turn this and lock this in place. Now, as soon as you do this, we have power and data coming to this wire. And this wire is going to connect to the front seat wire. So there's only one way this goes in because this is a fiber optic cable and it connects just like this and it locks. Now, the display is on. Okay, so now we have the wire obviously here that we're going to show you how to hide. And we have two ways of installing or hiding the wire uh, inside of the dash. We'll get to that in a minute. But now the default is parking and your battery percentage. And if you put a turn signal on, you'll see the left turn signal, the right turn signal, the hazard lights. Okay. And of course, when you put it in drive, you're gonna see D for drive and then your speed will illuminate here. So we're gonna take it out for a spin right now and show you some more details. Okay, a quick little demo here before it gets dark. You can see reverse, shows the reverse indicator. When we put it in drive, it goes back to drive and the turn signals work and everything functions and it's just great because you don't have to turn your head to the side anymore. And driving at night is even better. Look at how easily you can see your constant speed going down the street. Go. Okay, now we're going to start the installation. And uh, you'll notice it times out. Whenever you touch the brake, it'll plug back in. So you want to first pick the location of where you're going to put this, and you will have some room to move it around. Uh, next thing is we're going to show you two installation methods. One will completely hide the wire behind the dashboard, which involves with moving it out. But the simplest is just to loop it over the end cap like this, just right around and down the back. And then what we're going to do from here is pull the side panel off and show you the full installation of installation method one. So use your orange pry tool and pop the fuse panel off. This used to be a fuse panel in the old days, so we still call it one. Uh, then the, the panel to the left of it, which is on the A-pillar, you're just going to pry this one down. Again, this is simply a little unsnapping tool. And now the wire is going to come straight down and it's going to run along the sill plate. The wire is going to run along the sill plate like I'm pointing to. And then we're going to go between the carpet and under the seat and connect it to the back. So you just want to keep placing it in there. And then as you're done, you can simply put the panels back in. 
but we're gonna slide it under the door sill or the sill seal down and around all the way to the bottom. It's a very thick seal on the Model 3 and the Model Y. And we're gonna go all the way down and then we're gonna go underneath the panel here, which is right by the seat. So just keep tucking it in, sliding it under. And uh, the seat then we're going to obviously move it up and we're gonna unsnap the panel here on the inside. And you can see how the wire is just going to sit right underneath here. And then we're going to hide it by going right between the carpet seam that you'll notice here. And it'll be completely invisible. So we'll probably pick up from here in the back seat underneath. And we're going to show you how to slip it under the carpet so you won't see the um, wire anywhere. So again, fix the seal, put the cap back on. We'll go back and finish this up. We're going to get in the back seat now. Okay, now we disconnected the wire from the instrument cluster and we've raised the seat up all the way. And now you can see we're simply gonna run the wire down under the carpet and the carpet is partitioned off. So what we mean is, is that we've got a front seat carpet kit and you've got an opening here. So we're gonna run it all the way down underneath the seat mounting rails. And we're going to pull the plug out, run it all the way across, right over to here. And we're going to go under the carpet shelf. As you can see, it's lit up there with the gray line. So anyway, it's not too confusing. You're just going to feed the line under the carpet kit. And pull all the slack up. So see, that's our wire. And we are run all the way down and right underneath the vent outlet for the heat in the back seat. So just keep tucking it under. Now you have to go under the rail for the right side of the driver's seat. So there's room underneath it to squeeze it underneath. And now here we have our plug. It's hanging out right here. And now for the OBD2 plug, we already showed you how to connect that. So we'll simply plug it back in, check the connection on the dashboard. It's booted up, temperature showing. So we're good to get rid of all the wires. So you'll notice what we're gonna do now is just try to tuck all the wires in, and put them under the carpet. And that way you don't have anyone kicking or tracking. So these, um, the center console is mounted to the ground, but there always is room to feed things underneath because of the uh, partition in the carpet and also just because of the, the gap between uh, the armrest and the carpet kit that's installed by Tesla. So once that's all down, we'll try to get the lighting fixed here, sorry. And now we have the two plugs and we have about a foot of extra cable which is good to have. It's always better to have extra than not enough. Just bunch it all up, wind it up. And again, at the very bottom of the center console with the OBD2 port is you have lots of room in here. And uh, we've got our little doggy over there. Buddy, be a good boy. Hey. Closing it all up. And then we gotta put the panel back on. So you might wanna pull the carpet back. And again, the panel alignment is straight in. So those five clips just snap straight in just like that. It's a perfect installation. You can see if you have any wires showing, just tuck them under. You just don't wanna risk that cable ever getting pulled on or dragged or anything. And then clean everything up 
and it looks just like original and it's good to go now we're going to go get some more video um, and then we're going to show you the installation method two of hiding the wire under the dashboard to uh, not interfere with airflow okay so we're going to finish closing everything up just so everyone knows how to do it um, we like to show the videos installing and or removing with all the details so there's no questions asked or needed so the flat panel will go on next and, and notice that there's a hook on here so this panel here hooks on and snaps in and then the side fuse panel will be next and sometimes you might have to release a grommet or something if you've installed something else. We'll put this on real quick. So notice that slot gets the hook in the bottom. And the top piece snaps right into the gray headliner. Just like that. And then just pull back the rubber seal. So you might have the same issue going all the way down with the rubber seal. Just pull it back, once you hide the wire underneath it. You could take this whole piece out if you really wanted to put the tape, the line under it. And now we're gonna put the side panel on <clears throat> and that'll conclude the full installation. Okay, now it's installed and you can see how really invisible it is. And once you touch your brake pedal, it's gonna boot up. So now the instrument cluster display is on. You can see everything. And now if this wire inside of here, if you would like to hide this so it doesn't impair any of the airflow, uh, we're gonna show you how to do that right now. So we're gonna pop the dashboard loose. So we're gonna take the side panel off first. And then um, we're not gonna take the end caps off. Now these end caps were removable at one time, but now we're not gonna take it off because we don't need to. Um, so we're gonna have to pull this out, put it on top of the dash, loosen the other side, take the panel off the other side, and then we're going to pop the dashboard out. Okay, we got the side panel off the side. Now the dashboard is held in with a series of clips. So you just lift up, and the core comes out and the dashboard will literally back up two inches just by tugging on it and pulling it out like this. Then we're gonna take that wire and put it through the back. So we'll show you that in a second once we get it all the way out. All right, now we're gonna install this and we want everyone to understand what's going on under the dashboard. So this is a mixing chamber. Down here, the air is all mixed up and then it flows up vertical and it floors up, mixes horizontally and vertically, as we said. So we're going to take the wire, instead of leaving it up above where it could impede the airflow, we're gonna put it down here in the mixing chamber, and then we're gonna put the cluster right above. So we're gonna tape it down in place, pull all the slack here, just use a little piece of electrical tape and put it right inside. This is gonna position the wire so it's not gonna wander around and again, you're not gonna be interfering with airflow because this wire is under the dashboard. Okay, then we just gotta peek it out through the top and you'll still be able to adjust it left and right because we're positioning it, positioning it right on top of the dashboard up here. And now we're gonna put the dashboard back in place. So the dashboard goes back in the same way. Now, normally there's a lot of precautions about the clips and making sure that you're putting it in correctly. It has to be centered correctly. You have to position it left and right. So we're gonna do all that and show you here. So the dashboard just snaps right back in. And now you can see our cluster is gonna be right up on top. And then we're gonna tuck it in and we won't interfere with this airflow here. Remove the towels, anything you're using, snap it down. And again, this works with a carbon fiber dashboard, whether we built a replacement dash for your car, or if you have the wood dash or the white aluminum, then you're gonna position it 
right where you want it by looking through your steering wheel or above your yoke and then put it all back together.